What's up guys? In this video, I'm going to show you my editing workflow using this rock racing photo in Lightroom. Make sure you subscribe and follow us on social media using the links in the description. Also check out newlayer.com and sign up for the email list for special offers that are only available to email subscribers. Let's get started. So here's the before image and here's the after and I'm going to take you through my workflow and the order that I do things to create this look. New Layer members can download this raw photo in the project files at newlayer.com, but you can also apply this effect to any of your own images. So the first thing that I did was crop this photo in. So this is actually what it looked like before I cropped it. The sky and the big rock in the foreground look really cool, but I want the focus to be on the truck and the crowd in the background. So if I come back into that image, I'm going to hide the thumbnails now. And if I select the crop tool, you can see that I cropped it horizontally and at an angle to make the scene more dynamic. Now, this event took place out in the desert near Palm Springs in the summertime, so it was well over 100 degrees outside. So with all the dust and heat, this image needs to reflect that. So I'm going to take the temperature slider and increase the temperature to about 62 or 6300. And it was also in the super bright direct sun, so I'm going to increase the exposure a bit. I also want my starting image before I add any effects to have as big a dynamic range as possible. So I'm going to come over and bring the highlights down to about negative 45 and increase the shadows. Now normally I wouldn't take the shadows up this high, but there's a lot of dust floating in this image and I know that I'm going to dehaze it later, which typically darkens the shadows. So I'm bringing them up just a little bit more around 90. So decreasing the highlights and increasing the shadows just brings back some of the detail in the darkest and brightest parts of the image. Now, if you're not familiar with the histogram, it shows the darker parts of the image on the left and the brighter parts on the right. So if we had a lot of pure white in our scene, the histogram would be smashed up against the right side. And if we had a lot of pure black, it'd be the same, but on the left side. There isn't really pure white in the scene besides maybe a few t-shirts. So I'm going to increase the white slider, but I'm not going to get near the far right side of the histogram. So I'm going to come over to the white slider and increase that to about 40. And that'll just brighten the image and add some contrast. I also don't want the shadows to be completely black. So I'm going to decrease the black slider just a bit, but I'm going to stay pretty far away from the left side of the histogram. Now this is a really rugged scene, so I want to increase the presence using the texture and the clarity sliders. So I'm going to increase the texture a lot to about 75. And the same thing with the clarity slider. I'll take that up to about 80. So like I said, there was a lot of dust floating around. So I'm going to increase the dehaze slider to get rid of some of that. And I'll take that up to about 30 or so. So if you take a look at the before and the after, you'll see that it looks much hotter, much more rugged, and much sharper. And to me, that fits the scene better. I'm going to add an orange and teal split tone effect to this image, so I'm going to desaturate it just a bit, because I know I'll be adding some of my own colors back in, so I'm going to take the saturation down to about negative 25. Next, I'll come into the tone curve panel, and I'm going to add a point right here, and another one right here, and that way any changes I make to the top right point and the bottom left point will affect only the shadows and only the highlights and leave the midtones alone. So I'm going to increase the bottom left point, and that's going to take my shadows up just a tiny bit. And I'm going to bring down the top right point, and that's going to bring the highlights down just a little bit. Next, I'll come into the split toning panel, and I'm going to increase the saturation of the highlights to 100. And that'll just help us see the color that we're working with better. So I'm going to add a nice orange color to the highlights, so I'll drag the hue slider to about 45. And then I'll decrease the saturation until I like what I see. So about 35 is good. Next I'll do the same with the shadows, so I'll increase the saturation to 100. And I know good blues for split toning are usually between 200 and 230, so I'll bring my hue slider to 200, and then I'll shift it around from there until I find a color that I'm happy with. So around 205 is good. And then I'm going to bring the saturation down. And about 65 looks good. The balance slider lets you tell Lightroom what to consider shadow and what to consider highlight. So if I pull that all the way to the left, Lightroom will interpret more of this image as shadow and add blue into it. And if I take it all the way to the right, Lightroom will interpret more of this image as highlight and add orange into it. 
I want both orange and blue, but I want a good balance, so I'm going to move this slider until I'm happy. So in our case, that's about 35. So you can see a lot of tannish orange in the highlights and midtones, but the shadows have a nice blue cast to them. Next, I'm going to come down to my effects panel, and I'm going to give it a slight vignette, and that's just going to help pull focus to the truck. So about negative 15 is good. And lastly, I'm going to come down into the calibration panel. Most people never visit this panel, but it's a good way to add some orange and teal to your split toning effects. So I'm going to drag the red primary hue slider to the right just a little bit, and that'll shift the red channel towards orange. So 25 or 30 looks good. And then I'm going to come down to the blue primary hue slider and shift that to the left. That way the blue channel shifts a little more towards teal or cyan. So negative 25 or so looks good there. So that's it. Again, you can look at the before and the after. So the editing that we did made it look a lot more dynamic, a lot sharper, and a lot more rugged, which fits this scene well. Thanks for watching, and if you liked the video, make sure you subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment letting me know what you want to learn next or if you have any questions. I'm JT Shaver for New Layer. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.